the gospel according to Luke chapter 7, second half, the video cut off. Verse 23, and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And so this is directly, <laughs> this relates to these Jews and these scribes and these Pharisees bringing this sick person that built a synagogue and they are begging Jesus for help, right? These are people that want to kill him. These are people that will be killing him. These are people that hate him. They are purely jealous of him. Yet, they don't see any problem um, begging him for help, begging him for healing, right? As soon as this is going to be done, and during while it's done, right? This is going on. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. These people are offended by him. Yet, it's okay for them to bring their synagogue builder to Jesus and be like, you need to heal him, all right? He's like, he loves God more than any of us, and yeah. So they can have faith, even though they still have this faith, they are still offended in him. But he healed them anyway. But after he heals them, he heals that synagogue builder. And after he uh, bring, raises to life this dead man, look what he says. And blessed is he who so ever shall not be offended in me. Okay, so so once they get him healed, oh, they are back to being offended. I don't think they ever stopped, though. I think they were offended from the beginning. They were offended while they are using him to heal their little synagogue builder. And they are immediately going to be offended when the deed is accomplished. And when the messengers of John were departed, he began to speak unto the people concerning John. What went ye out into the wilderness for to see? A reed shaken with the wind. But what ye went out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they which are gorgeously apparelled and live delicately are in king's courts. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet, yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet. Mm. So, he's letting him know, I'm much more than a prophet. But hey, this is what these people that are so offended in him, um, this is the the height of the cognitive dissonance they can bring to the forefront of their tiny minds, their tiny satanic minds. This is the best they can do. Oh, well, yes, he's a prophet. You know, he's healing there. He's got to be something because he's, he's raising the dead. He's healing all the sick. Um, he's got to be something. Well, he's not the son of God. He's not God. He's not Jesus. He's a prophet. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's too hard, right? It's it's too hard. Like the 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 disciples' minds are trying to wrap their minds around it. They're getting called hard hearted because they're in a boat in the middle of a storm and they're afraid and they're being reprimanded by Jesus saying you're hard hearted, you have fear. You so this is a really different thing that's going on. And yeah, the closest anybody can really kind of understand or how they are describing him or how they can cognitively understand what's going on. Well, it's hard for the disciples even, right? And they're seeing miracles in front of them. And it's hard for them to respond in turn, they're under training. It's not like they're going to be told this and they immediately recognize and um, internalize it and then they can act like that themselves. No, this is a huge, huge, huge uh, spiritual process. It's not psychological even. It's beyond that, right? So... Much more than a prophet, he lets them know, by the way. This is he of whom it is written. Oh, 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 oh. 
yeah, that's even worse. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way for before thee. For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist, but he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. So he's even backing that statement up that like, I'm not just a prophet, but you know what? Not only that, um, this John the Baptist, he is the greatest prophet, actually. He's letting them know I'm not really a freaking prophet. But also, um, by the way, he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Oh my gosh, right? Whoa, we've all got a lot of work to do there. Wow. Okay, this is what is expected of you Jews that are telling him, oh, he must be a prophet. Because they don't even recognize that John the Baptist was a prophet. And he's been doing this for a while, before Jesus was born, right? And all the people that heard him and the publicans justified God being baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of him. So, here is the separation. The people who are baptized of him. Justified God. The, Pharisee, the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the counsel of God because why they prefer the counsel of men this is the problem and the Lord said whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation into what are they like they are like unto children sitting in the marketplace and calling one to another and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned to you, and ye have not wept. So it's according to man's laws, right? For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and ye say he hath the devil. The Son of Man come eating and drinking, and ye say, Behold, a gluttonous man, and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of all her children. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. Oh no, really? And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, which she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house brought an alabaster box of ointment. And stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now, when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus, answering, said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on, there was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most
And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss. But this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace.